，哎，你好。Stretches here when I'm waiting for the as I'm waiting for the light to turn. There, a little makeshift stretching area. It's also a good place to wait for the GPS to sync up on my watch because there's no buildings. Kids these days. Made to the safety of the park. There's no cars or riffraff on bicycles trying to trying to get at me. All right, so today I want to talk about uh, injuries, specifically stuff with the foot, and how to like train with it or remedy it or prehab it and, and rehab it. So about a month ago, and I'm so sorry I haven't addressed this sooner, but about a month ago in the comments I had a request for something about sesamoiditis, flat feet, and as a result like bone spurs that occur from the flat feet. So to start things off, one, I am not a doctor. If you have any bone stuff, or if you've had any like lingering serious pains for about two weeks, you should definitely go see a doctor. Get that checked out, get an x-ray on it. Usually about two weeks of pain from running or walking means that there's some kind of bone injury, potentially, sorry to say. And also just a side note, it usually takes about two weeks to see a stress fracture show up on an x-ray because the bone has to start to like recalcify. So I remember, I remember like, I got a stress fracture on my toe, and I knew it. Po I knew I knew it cracked because it was like an immediate snap. Um, but it didn't show up on X-rays for about two weeks. So just a quick side note. So yeah, if there's anything serious, if you have any like lingering pain, um, you need to go see a professional. Get it checked out. Get an X-ray. Get an MRI. What I'm going to talk about today is just like a general overview for the feet and how to like take care of them so that. You can, you can continue running healthily and pain-free. So for starters, you should train through discomfort, but never through pain. So if there's pain, go see a doctor. So that's point number one, train through discomfort, never through pain. Point number two, take care of your feet. There's about 26 bones, 33 joints, and over 100 muscles, tendons, and ligaments in your feet, which means that they are extremely important. There's a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of moving parts down there. Um, and also, obviously, it's the one thing connecting you to the ground. So don't neglect your feet. Blisters, don't ignore blisters, don't ignore chafing down there, ingrown nails. That stuff can like make your running miserable and it could also get really bad like if stuff gets infected. Okay, so sesamoiditis is basically like an inflammation of the tendon underneath the big toe. Um, it can result from like blunt trauma, like you land wrong, like say dancers coming down and they land, their, their foot's too far flexed, their toes are too far flexed, you land on like the ball of your foot, and that can cause it. Um, obviously runners can get it. Um, it could be blunt force trauma, it could be predator abuse trauma, and then flat feet that result in like bone spurs. Some people have like genetic flat feet, and then some people have, I don't know, maybe like, call like atrophied flat feet where the arches and the foot, the muscles in the foot, have kind of atrophied from lack of use, lack of training, whatever you want to call it. That's how the whole barefoot running movement thing started. So I want to give you guys my general thoughts on this. Coming from someone who's been running for about 14 years, I've done barefoot running. Yes, I read the book Born to Run when I was like 18. I got super inspired because I was having shin splints and stress fractures. I ditched my shoes. I ran barefoot on the asphalt up to like 10 miles a week, 15 miles a week. Got calluses. I got a pair of vitamin fry fingers. Um, and I jumped into those too fast. That's why I got a stress fracture on my toe. My second metatarsal. So I've done barefoot running for a while. I did it on the grass. And I used to do the other extreme. I used to wear orthotics. Basically an insert in your shoe, which totally controls your foot motion. Whereas the barefoot running totally does not control your foot motion. I've done both. As of right now and for the last five or six years, I've been running in totally neutral shoes. No motion control, no orthotics. And I took it really slow when I started jumping into neutral shoes. Yeah, it's just over the years, I've kind of adapted to it. I even tried going in a pair of motion control shoes one time after running in neutral shoes and I got some major problems in my legs. 
my general thought on this is one, if you have specific foot pain, foot injury, you need to rehab it until there's no pain. It means RICE, R-A-C-E, rest, ice, compression, elevation. So taking care of the muscle or the tendon or the bone until it's recovered, right? Until it's below that like stress, breaking curve thing. There's a stress reaction point and after a certain point of too much stress it goes by breaks or it wears down and then you have to kind of wait for it to go back to that point. So rest, ice, compression, elevation, stretching, that kind of stuff. You know everything your doctor is going to tell you to do when you have an injury like that. That's the first part. So that stuff will solve that, that issue but it won't necessarily address the underlying problem which is kind of, this is very anecdotal but there is an amount of training that needs to be done for the foot muscles, the muscles of the feet and the ankles in my opinion, so that you can kind of better protect against the stuff that might come up in the future. So I am 100% not advocating people go out there and start doing barefoot running to solve all their foot aches and woes and pains. That's ridiculous. I'm gonna link a bunch of exercises below and also I'll probably make a future video that goes into this kind of stuff in detail. But there's things you can do to strengthen the muscles of your foot, the tendons of your foot, and the ankle to uh, better prevent foot injuries like this from happening. If we take sesamoiditis, I think there's a there's an aspect of it, there's a percentage of that injury that maybe results from having a weaker arch muscle or maybe the extensors or the flexors of the toes, so the tops and bottoms of your toes, aren't as strong as they could be. So maybe, maybe an arch just isn't strong enough, so when you land and you pronate, it pronates too much, and, it, and the arch isn't strong enough to kind of keep your foot from over pronating, and it puts extra stress on that big toe, because when you splay in, when you roll in, if you have flat feet, it means you have no arch which means that that problem I just described is just gonna be exacerbated. So if you're a runner and you have totally fly feet, I honestly can't imagine, it must be very painful. And I'm really curious, if anyone's watching this right now, and you have like genetically flat feet, but you are a runner, let me know in the comments, I'm super interested. I've had one friend, he was an old military buddy, he had totally flat feet, and he was able to run, and I think there was a certain point where it got really painful, but he could do certain stuff and it was, it was manageable. But I, if you've watched my videos and you watch the channel, one of the messages or one of the themes I always try and like get across is that the body adapts over time. And I'm really a firm believer in that. Um, and it's not just anecdotal stuff. I mean, your, your bone cells have a turnover, your red blood cells have a turnover, your muscle cells have a turnover. Turnover meaning every so often, they, they die and they regenerate, and when they regenerate, they come back in a different way, right? And it's that process over time that obviously makes people stronger and faster, but I also think it's that process over time that allows people with whatever biomechanical problems to... Literally just got a bug in my eye. Can anyone see that? Ugh, bug in my eye somewhere. It's still there, as I saying that allows people with biomechanical problems or not perfect, not already perfect running biomechanics to adapt and get better and be able to run. My story, my case, when I was 14, 14, 15, 16, I could not run more than 35 miles a week without getting aggressive shin splints that led to stress fractures. 35 miles a week. Now, over time, years and years and years and years, I can run more, I can do 100, I can do more than 100 miles a week. I so choose. Heard the story, Prefontaine had one leg shorter than the other. I think we all have like one leg that's shorter or longer than the other. So if you have flat feet, I honestly, I think over time, if you're smart and you do the right training for your feet and you gradually increase your volume, I feel like, you know, you could get to the point where you could put some serious distance in. So please, if you're, if you're someone with flat feet, comment below. All right, so Jake, what exercises but muscle training, I have this pain, I don't want the pain to come back again. Like we were talking about fixing the pain issue like with ice and compression and elevation. But how do you get it to not come back in the future? There's awesome exercises you can do with a TheraBand. It's, they're gonna be very, very, very specific and very targeted. So these are exercises you'd find in a physical therapist's office or some like secret exercises that only ballet dancers know because it's very like, very specific stuff. I'll link them below, super interesting. Off the top of my head, there's one with a resistance band where you point your toe and you tweak it out to the left or the right. So you basically flex your arch, put the resistance on with the band, 
go against it. There's one where you do kind of like a plie for your ballet dancer. Uh, so you're standing and then you use your arch to kind of push up onto the balls of your feet. Super difficult, super challenging, but it'll get your arches jacked. Um, there's another one that I found where it's similar to the ballet one, but you're not going up on the balls of your feet. You're kind of positioning your arch, contracting it, and then lifting it up in that contracted position. Very cool. So those are extreme awesome arch exercises. You can even go so far as to do TheraBand stuff on your toes, your individual toes, putting resistances opposite directions, like on your big toe, which can help kind of control the movement up and down. Just a side note, you can't directly strengthen tendons, but there's no such thing as tendon training. You strengthen the muscles around the joint. So tendons connect muscle to bone, ligaments connect bone to bone. So what you can do is strengthen the muscle around the joint, and then the muscle gets stronger, and then as a result, the tendons adapt with the muscle, and the ligaments adapt with that torque, with the bone. So that's how that works. You can't like train a ligament directly. It's always an indirect adaptation, if that makes sense. So let's say there's someone with an ACL injury, uh, an anterior cruciate ligament. One of the ligaments in their knee goes kablamo. Your ACL here, it connects from here to the back, and it keeps the motion of the knee from going forward. So when you see a football player, they're pivoting like this, putting tr they're putting torque this way, and they get hit from the side like that. That'll tear their ACL. So in physical therapy, to, to re-strengthen that, that area, you train the quads, the abductors, the adductors, um, the calf, and the hamstrings, heavily targeting the hamstrings. And the idea is by targeting all of those muscles, the stability of the joint improves, and then also the tendons adapt with the increased strength of the muscle. Okay, so now it's kind of like my big recommendation, and I'm gonna phrase it really delicately. I do think barefoot running has its place in training as a sometimes supplementary tool to use. I do not recommend a large majority of your running is done barefoot. Here's what I recommend off the top of my head. Two runs, maximum 20 minutes a week on super soft surfaces, grass, and that really awesome squishy um, astroturf you find like an American football field. So nice. They don't have this here. Start off with an easy pace. So maybe, let's say it's Monday, Thursday. So Monday, Thursday for your warm up or your cool down, you go on like one of those astro track, astro turf fields, just jog around for 20 minutes. Easy pace, super chill. And honestly, I would work up to that 20 minutes if you've never run barefoot before. Why not do four sets of five minute jogs? Five minute running barefoot, totally barefoot on the grass. It'll feel really nice and comfy. Take a two or three minute break, then go for another five minutes. Break it up. These muscles and tendons and ligaments in your feet are super tiny and super delicate. I um, mean, you really, 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 really don't want to overdo it. So if you've never run barefoot before, just be super sensitive to your feet. Twice a week, 20 minutes tops for like a month, month and a half while your, your feet adapt just to this new stress. Your feet are gonna feel really sore in weird places. Uh, like the inside of your ankle and like the outside part of a toe and really goofy stuff. But it really, honestly, it really helps. Helps a lot with your mechanics. Your feet are going to get stronger. Will this make you a faster runner? I'm not saying that. Will this make you impervious to lower body injuries? I'm not saying that. Will this mitigate force on your lower body from running? I'm also not saying that. There's actually been a few studies that have totally disproven that. Whether you're running barefoot or with shoes, same amount of force. I'll link all that below because I know someone's gonna see this and freak out. What I am saying though, to general concept overview, we use our legs and our feet to run. It stands to reason that by providing a little bit of light training to those areas that we use a lot, but may not get specific training, it stands to reason that that could be part of the overall holistic package for our training. Can we say that? I think we can say that. Like this video I showed here with the tibialis anterior and the peroneus brevis, two muscles that are used but are not necessarily trained specifically while we run. They're like complementary muscles for running. Those are also some of the muscles in the feet. I think if you put a little bit of attention, give it a little bit of time every week, it can't hurt, you know? As long as it's smart, as long as you're listening to your body, 
and you're not pushing through pain. So try it out for a month, month and a half. It takes about six weeks to see true adaptations in the muscles because the muscle cell turn over time. So give it a little bit of time. Don't push it. Do your little jog twice a week warm up or cool down um, and just kind of see how things go. After that first month and a half, you know, maybe you could push the pace a little bit. So ways to increase the force. There's three ways to increase the, uh, the intensity with running. You can increase the total time, you can increase the pace, and you can decrease the recovery. So that means there's a few ways you can modify it to make it harder after it's easy. You could run longer on those two days 30 minutes twice a week. You could run three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You could run faster instead of running at an easy pace or at a medium pace. Yeah, and you can kind of stack it from there. Two days back to back, one day break, two days back to back. There's a lot of ways to play around with it. So as something I'll probably address in a later episode, this is a very general overview, general recommendation, general concept, thought process. If there's muscles in your feet and your lower body, that aren't getting training or attention um, and they could help with your training, why not give them a little bit of love, you know? So yeah, long-winded answer. I'm so glad it hasn't started raining yet. Apparently, it's supposed to start raining for like 10 days straight today because because Taipei things. <laughs> so to those people who commented, I'm so sorry it took me so long to get back to you. I hope this was a good enough answer for you. Don't lose hope, don't lose faith. I've had plantar fasciitis, which is another result from flat feet, bone spurs, heel spurs. I've, I've bruised that bone underneath my toe. You know, I know, I know that feeling. It's like, it sucks going for a run and feeling like you're never going to run pain-free again. Terrible feeling. What's even worse is when you go to the doctor and the doctor's like, oh yeah, we'll just rest it and you know, it should get better. Will it, ha will it happen again? And he's like, yeah, probably. And you're like, for the rest of my life? He's like, yeah. It's like, what? Or she. And not every doctor's like that. I'll summarize everything below. I'll put links to research in the description. If you like this stuff, throw a like, smash that subscribe button, leave your comments below. And uh, thank you guys for, for following and watching. Um, I'll see you guys on the next episode, which will be about arm swing. Okay, I'll see you guys later, bye.